So this is question six of the 2022 uh, paper one of the Leave Insert Ordinary Level um, Maths. So as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetry at gmail.com and click the like and subscribe button to get access to more playlists. So let's get stuck in. And like as always, I suggest pausing the video, just having a go. Uh, if you get it, brilliant, just check the answer. Okay, if not, um, then hopefully the video will help. So let's read the question carefully. It says the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Now that's got meaning, okay. There's two types of sequences that we'd have to cover, arithmetic and geometric. Okay, and arithmetic goes up by a regular amount. Okay, so it's got a common difference. Um, is given by the following expression for n is an element of n. So all that means is that n is a positive whole number. Okay. And I give us this sequence here. So let's just write it out. So t of n is equal to negative 254 plus um, n minus 1 times 4. Now I could multiply the bracket there, okay, and I could end up with a statement t of n is equal to negative 254. Now 4 by n is 4n, okay, negative 1 by 4 is negative 4. I could simplify that statement if I wanted to, to give me negative 258 plus 4n. Now, I may not know why I'm doing that, but I probably have qualified for something, okay? I'd have to check the marking scheme just to make sure. And yeah, now, I do see, I'm looking actually at it right now. If you'd written the uh, T of n formula, it's just saying the marking scheme, and that's given to you in the maths tables, okay? Um, t of n is equal to a plus n minus 1 by d. And if I just bring over the maths tables, okay, um, in the contents page, this is sequences and series. These are the formulas that matter. Okay, now we might only be concerned with these two in reality, okay, for an arithmetic sequence. So we're having that open beside you, just in case you need them. And there could be at some stage we do need them. So it says, find the value of t of one. Now I could have used this formula here and gone t of one uh, is equal to the first value, okay? Um, and the, the difference there, Actually, it mightn't have worked. I have to think that through. The way that's more obvious to me is just go, well, look, they're telling me that n is one. So this is one. So t of one, is equal to negative 258 plus 4 times 1. Apologies for going so far over. So t of 1 is equal to negative 258. 4 times 1 is 4. And I've run out of space. That's negative 258 plus 4 is negative 254. And that's the answer. Apologies for my messy work. Now, part 2 here says, find the value of the common difference for the sequence that is t2 minus t1. So I know what t1 is, okay? So t2 minus t1. Now, I don't know what t2 is yet, but I know the two to t1 is negative 254. So I can, I can use the exact same thing as I did above, okay? Instead of n now being one, it's two. So t of two is equal to negative 258 plus four times two, because now n is two. That's the same thing as four times two is eight. Combine those numbers, that's negative 250. So same here, T2 we now know is negative 250, take away negative 254. Now that's gonna be the same thing as negative 250, minus by minus is a plus, so plus 254, so the difference is four, okay? And that should be the answer, uh, it is, okay? So sequence series is a, is a handy number if you just follow through on the algebra, but it can be very off-putting when you see this weird terminology. And just remember that the N just stands for the, the term. So T100, okay, not to make a Terminator 2 reference, is going to be, everywhere you see N, you're gonna replace that with 100. And it'll be whatever it is. And it's going up, the first term we worked out was minus 254, and it's going up by plus four every time. So T2 is going to be minus 250, T3 is going to be minus 246, and on and on and on and on. It's changing by the same amount. And we worked out in part two that that change is four every time. Okay. Now that's part A. 
part B says, find the form for smallest value of n. Um, find the smallest value of n, okay? That is where n is a natural number. So n is going, natural number means, okay, that it's a positive whole number, okay? So look, let's do this, okay? And even here, if I were just trying to BS it, okay, I'm going to remove the brackets. We did this kind of already, okay? So I can make that simpler. It was minus 258 plus 4n is greater than zero. I might as well follow through on this, okay? So look, this is an equation of one unknown, so it is solvable. It's just a matter of doing it. So what I could do here is I want n on its own. I want everything else the far side. So the simplest way to do that is to add 258 here. If I do it one side, I should do it both sides. Now I'm doing that because I want to get rid of this. Okay, and minus 258 plus 258 is zero. So I'm left with 4n is greater than zero plus 258 is just 258. Then I want, I don't want four times n, I want n. So the simplest way to do that is to divide four by four. I can do that as long as I do it to both sides. Now they'll divide you left with n is greater than, now I should use my calculator. I have a bad habit of not using the calculator and then messing up the calculations. 258 divided by four is equal to 64.5, okay? Now that's not a natural number, okay? That's um, a, a, a rational number. So what's the next nearest whole number? It's n is greater than 65. That's a positive whole number. Now, even if you didn't follow that last step and you presented this on the page and then maybe you did something over here to try something else, this will achieve the max. Now you might lose a penalty for not rounding um, or not declaring the actual answer. But um, actually I probably shouldn't use that um, in equality. N is equal to 65. Now in the notes, okay, um, that's the yeah, same thing. I, I, and there are other ways of approaching this. Like what I could have started off with, if we recall, if I, T of one was negative 254. Like I could have just tried and, er, tried and erred it and got down by four to negative 250, then negative 246, negative 244. Now it would take forever, okay? But you'd end up like this first term, second term, third term, fourth term. Eventually, you'll get down to where this is no longer negative, it turns positive. And that should be at the 65th time you've done that. Now, which is more efficient and elegant? Well, this is, okay, which takes a long time. That does, and that's called trial and error. And sometimes that's a perfectly legitimate way of doing something, the way you have to do it, okay? But again, that could take you time. Now, you'd end up with the right answer, okay? But you wouldn't know this at the time, but all that for five marks, you could take you a long time to do it. Um, is that time better spent? But if that's the only way you can do it and you have time to do it, then do it. Okay, five marks is still five marks. That's question six, part B. Now part C here, it says the sum of the first n terms of the sequence is given by this. Now straight away, when I see S of n, I'm gonna go look up the formula, okay, in the maths tables, and it's there. I probably should know enough by heart, but whatever. S of n is equal to n over two, uh, times two times the first value plus n minus one times the difference. So I know the first value was minus two, five, four. I know the difference was four. So this equation initially has four unknowns. I don't know this, I don't know this, I don't know this, and I don't know this. Okay, now n is repeated here. Now, if I realize I actually have two of these values, okay, they're looking for, um, or they're telling me that S of n is equal to, uh, they give me this whole thing, n over two times two times negative 254 plus four n minus four. Now just read this, I probably don't actually need any of this here, but no harm. And I suppose if I start working with this, um, this has two unknowns, S of n, and n. So even if you don't know what you're doing, you might as well resolve it, okay, as in simplify it, okay. 
Now I'm going to simplify inside the brackets. So this is two times negative 254, which should be negative 508. Okay, we've got an eight, um, plus four n minus four. Now I can combine those two numbers together. So S of n is equal to n over two times minus 508 minus four is minus 512 plus four n. Now we can finally multiply the brackets here. And this, um, these two numbers here multiply by the top here. So if I multiply across by the n over two, I'll end up with minus 512 n over two plus 4n by n over 2 is the same thing as 4n squared over 2. I can actually simplify that a little bit further. I can divide the 2 in, and that gives me um, minus 256. I should use a calculator, but um, n plus half 4n squared is 2n squared. Now, it's asking us to solve this equation. And if you see here, Initially, I'm told S of n is equal to this. And down here, I'm told that this is equal to zero. These two things are the same. Now, if you look along, this is the same as this. So therefore, mustn't this be the same as this? And that's a logical thing. So S of n is equal to zero. Now, once they say that, okay, I can swap that into the equation. And if you cop what's going on here, this is a quadratic. If you see a quadratic now, it's all got the same variable, but one is to a power of two. You just solve it. I can make this simpler by dividing across by two. So I get minus 123. I have to do it in the calculator. I shouldn't have to do it in the calculator. But 256 divided by two, 128. Okay. So that's negative 128n and divide this side by two. So two n squared divided by two is n squared. And at this stage you can factorize. Okay, so I'm gonna look for, at both of these terms and see is there anything I can pull out? Can I express it in a different way? If I see it there, that's n times negative 128 plus n is the same thing. And in maths, everything must be reversible. So if I want to go back, can I? Like, is n times negative 128 equal to one, negative 128n? It is. Is n times n equal to n squared? It is. So this is my two factors, okay? So one of the factors must be equal to zero, and the other factor um, must, this is n plus, actually, right the wrong way around. Got my brain in a kerfuffle, so I just wrote out that statement. And the logic of it is, if you have two things that are multiplied and the answer is zero, well, one of them must be equal to zero. Now, if, or both of them are equal to zero, and that's why we can write these two statements. N is equal to uh, zero, or negative 128 plus N equals zero. And once you're here, you can just um, add 128 to both sides, okay, to get rid of the 128 on the left. They cancel, you're left with N is equal to 128. Again, excuse my bad writing. Um, if I go to a cleaner answer, okay, I've done that here. I'm given the uh, statement, and I've realized that's equal to zero. That's that's the crux of the question. Once you're here, or even if you didn't get that far, why wouldn't you just remove the brackets and, and simplify it out? That's how I got down to here. Okay, now I didn't bother um, having them in the notes. I just went with it. Okay, and I said that um, I could pull 2n out of this and 2n out of this. Basically, what would I divide across that would divide in with no remainder? And with this statement, so if one factor, I can put it equal to zero, I did that here. And the second factor, put it equal to zero, and I got the 127. Now, you can't have it. They say that they're not, n is not equal to zero. So this particular answer here is not important. If you think about it, you can't have a zero term. That's not a thing, okay? Whereas it can, I can have a 127 term, and that's the one we go with, okay? Is it a natural number? Yes. Uh, is it equal to zero? No. Okay, so it satisfies the, the, what the question is asked for. So it's a tricky enough question. I went down the wrong path initially, okay, writing it out, and then realized that sorry, I'm overthinking it, and started on that work. So um, I think that's the end of question six. 
Right, so as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com and click like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. See you on question seven.